Today we're going to talk about design boards. These are super useful and once you start using them, I think you'll find that you can't do without them. So let me tell you first what they are. This is a small one here and you can see it's a piece of foam core and the foam core is just, you can buy it at the Walmart or online. Uh, it comes in different sizes and multi-packs and you can cut it to whatever size you want with an X-Acto knife or other cutting utensil. But what you're gonna do is make design boards and let me show you some of the different sizes. So this is what you can buy, as I said, get out of the way. So this is a small one, but you can also make larger ones here and you can even make much larger ones. And things like this are great if you wanna put different blocks or if you have like a lot of pieces cut out, you can label them here and then you can move this from table to table and put it in different places. Same with this, I find this size is great, but I also use this little size a lot. And one of the things that I like to do with it is I'll lay out a block and put it here and then I'll lay out another block and you can stack them up and you can have a whole bunch of them. You can lay out everything, stack it up. You can carry it to your sewing machine. You can carry it, carry it to your ironing board. Uh, when you finish the blocks, you can press them and lay them on here. Some people even will put like bungee cords or ribbon around and you can take these on the road with you and it'll hold things in place. Um, but it's really nice when you have pieces of a block and you're trying to make sure that they're put together the right way. And that's what we're gonna use them for in step four, because you can lay out the various pieces, make sure they look right, compare them to the instructions, and then you can take this and sew on it. So let's talk about how you make these. The first thing you do is take the foam core and cut it to the size that you like. So I'm leaving this the size that came in the package but if I wanted to, I could cut it into smaller pieces. You can make these and give them as little gifts. So if you have more foam core than you need, I find I put some extra down in the basement and when I need a board, I don't have the right size or I'm short, I have a big project, I can run down and make those. What you're gonna put on this is either a piece of batting or you can use this felt. This is, you can buy at the Michaels or craft stores or Amazon, wherever. And I've cut it to be the same size as my board. And this felt works really well because you can compare. Obviously this is a well-loved design board. And when it gets real linty, you can use your favorite tool, the lint roller, and do this and clean it up but this will start to wear a little, and you can even see that on a lot of mine, that's happening. With the felt ones, they last longer. This one gets a lot of use, but it doesn't look quite as beat up. So this is just felt, but like I said, you could use batting. The first step, what you're gonna do once you cut it and you cut your batting or your felt, is you're going to use your glue gun. Mine is the oldest glue gun possibly in the world. I think it's from high school, um, but doesn't matter. And you're going to glue this, you know, put some rows of glue, make sure you get it around the edges, press that down. You know, if you don't know how to use a glue gun, that's a different thing you have to learn. But you're gonna put that on, get it all lined up. You only put it on one side. I guess you could put it on both, but you really can't use both at the same time. Okay, so let's pretend that this is glued on just so I can hold it up. The next step is the edging. Now, I have some friends that say, I don't wanna waste my time decorating this. I just put the felt or the flannel or the um, felt or the batting on, sorry, and don't put any edging and that's fine, but they're not as cute. If you want it to look cute, you wanna make the edging. So. To do that, you take a piece two and a half inches wide. I tend to use two and a quarter because I use leftover batting or binding and I cut my binding two and a quarter and that's fine. So you're gonna fold it in half. You got make a piece to go around 
and then you're gonna fold it in half and mark it, and you're gonna fold each of the edges over and press that all the way around, and then you're gonna zigzag right down the middle. So you would keep going down here and zigzag down the middle. What you end up with is a piece long enough to go all the way around where you've zigzagged here. So on one side, this is the finished side, and then this side is where the raw edges have come together. So then you're gonna take your board with your felt or your flannel or your batting, and you're gonna start on the edges with your hot glue gun. You're gonna run a little bead, and I do it in little sections. So start not on the corner, a little away. Take the side that is raw, so run a little bead of hot glue, and press the zigzag right on the top. And go, on, and then put a little more glue gun. Don't over glue, don't burn your fingers, all those things. You're gonna go all the way around, like that. So let's say you're getting, I'm gonna do it on this one because I'm short. So you're down here, you're coming around. When you get to the edges, you just glue around so you've got sticking out on either side, okay? So now you've gone all the way around. When you get to the two edges, you can be as simple as over them lap a little and put a little glue. You can turn it in in like this and have it finished. You can do it on a diagonal, whatever you want. Just, you know, end it somehow. So now you're gonna have your edge like this. So go on one side. So you're gonna lay this down and run a small bead of glue right along that edge and press it. And you're gonna treat the corners similar to how you would treat the binding on a quilt. So you're gonna miter it, just go in, fold over, keep going down. And you're gonna run a bead. So you go all the way around on one side, then you're gonna flip it over. And this side, let's say, has your flannel or your batting. It's already glued down. And you've already got the back and the side, so again, you just run a little bead underneath. I try to stay real close to the edge and press it. And then you're all done. So you have a design board with a nice cute uh, fabric around the edge. You can piece your strip with leftover scraps, whatever you want. This is an idea that um, I first heard about from Lori Holt, who is a quilt designer, and her blog has information about how to do this. Um, they even sell these design boards um, Lori Holt does from her website. But they're easy to make. You can use leftovers. You can have the supplies in your house. And they're a fun gift for your quilty friends. And I think you'll find them very helpful in step four. So as you're working on your blocks and putting your pieces together, put them out, lay them out, make sure they all look right, take them to the sewing machine, and you'll be good to go. So have fun with these, and I hope you get to make some.